Hello! Welcome back to the channel, everyone! We are finally back with another VTuber model tutorial! This one was very highly requested. Today, we're gonna go over how to make an alternate outfit toggle. Completely new outfit from head to toe with new accessories and a slightly different hairstyle. So today, we'll be going over the outfit design, the art, and drawing all the layers, separating all the layers, rigging it onto an existing model, and how to make the toggles work in VTube Studio. Of course, there will be chapters, so you can look through whatever part you need if you already know how to do, you know, most of it. So let's just get straight into it! Of course, before we make a whole outfit toggle, we're gonna need to design the outfit. Since we're putting all this work into making a new outfit and rigging it and making this toggle and everything, I would keep in mind how you're designing it, you know, just so everything makes sense when you're rigging it. And so, you know, that it looks cute, hopefully. But today, I will not be designing my own outfit because someone else designed one for me! If you didn't know, I held an outfit contest a few months ago. The theme was Ryu Ice Cream and everyone had two months to work on an entry. I only picked one winner and the winner got a live today chibi from me. And I will be streaming the progress on that chibi soon if you're interested on how to rig a chibi model. Surprisingly, we did get a lot of participants, so thank you to everyone who entered. The theme was pretty broad, so we had a lot of different designs. I had a stream where I went over what kind of designs I was looking for, and I reviewed every entry until we got to the winning design, which was this one. Ta-da! Thank you to Estrimi for entering such a cute design. I just thought the design was really clean and suit my model a lot. I just loved the shapes and just how comfy it felt. So I was pretty drawn to this design. I wish I could have picked more designs, but guys, I'm just a girl, okay? I'm one girl with no time to make like six different outfit toggles. And I would have to make six different prizes, which I can't do. <laughs> All right, now that we have our design, we can slap it on our model. Thankfully, the winner of my contest did use my base that I made. That's basically just my model. So it was pretty easy to translate it back onto my model. And since the design is pretty easy, I didn't have to make anything too complicated for the separation. So I kept it pretty simple. I could have done like some fancy separation and make angles and and physics really nice, but I'm making a new model soon anyway, so I don't want to make it too complicated. Also, I didn't rig this model too complicated anyways, so let's just keep it simple. Anyway, all of this is footage from my stream where I worked on the art for this, so if you want to check out the stream, it's still up on my YouTube. I don't go too much into separating it because I try to rush all the art on stream, so I rendered everything off stream and separated everything properly. For me, I like to make like a toggle folder above all the art and then just draw the new outfit and the hair on top. Some people like to put the folders into the model so everything's overlapping correctly, but this is just how I prefer it because it's easier for me. And of course, you can always move around folders later anyway, so whichever method you choose now, you can change it later. We're going to be moving these layers in Live2D anyway. I get a lot of people asking me about how to separate certain things. So in my very, very first video, I have a little separation guide that I use for my first original tutorial model. It's a little outdated, but if you want to check that out, it's a good guideline, I think, for at least a basic rig. So let me show you how I did the layers for the new outfit toggle. Like I said earlier, I have all of my new outfit toggle stuff on a folder right above my entire model. So you can still see like my old hair under it. And then if I toggle this off, you see the original model. You don't have to separate the new outfit too differently from the original model unless you did not draw like say your full arms but your new outfit shows your arms you might have to redraw that for your outfit toggle so yeah i basically just separate everything like i usually would for a basic model all my hair pieces here and all the accessories i have a little tuft here for my new little hair color spring thing on my new outfit one of my hands has different nail polish colors so i had to redraw those fingers i have my coat here everything is separated left and right i have my skirt stuff and my top and my arms and everything i even have parts of my bag separated also my legs and my shoes Shoes. Also, I realized I need to fix some of my layers. You kind of don't want specs like that, but you know, we'll just pretend they're not there for now. And then this is my model with the base model all turned off. So this is just all the new layers I'm putting in that you see here. In my new series for my new model, I will try to go as in depth into separation as I can for those who still don't understand. So if you're still struggling, um, hang in there while you still can. 
So now that you're done with your art and separation, save this as a PSD. I would probably name this like Chupico Outfit 1 or something. And yes, I do save it with all the other original model files in there. Also, I would unhide all the layers that I hit right now. Sometimes when I'm working on a new outfit, I do change some of the original art. So when I import it back in the live 2D, I can just whip those textures out really quick. So yeah, once you have that saved as a PSD, let's go into a live 2D. All right, here we are. And just for reference, I am on Live 2D 5.0 using the Pro version. But yeah, first, you just got to open up your model that's already rigged here. As you can see, she moves. And then next, go to File, Open, and find the PSD you just saved. Now, let's open that. So we're going to have two options here. You can create a new model, which will put up a new tab here with new PSD, or you can import the or you can import the PSD straight into your model you just rigged. So if we pick our model here and press OK, it's going to give us some of these options. If you're a bit of a mess like me, this might be kind of confusing for what all of these do. But if you're not messy like me, you probably just have one PSD here that you can replace and that will replace the files. Easy peasy for you. For example, if you had like a left hand and right hand and you fix one of the hands, if you import it with the same layer name, it'll change out those textures really easily. Or you can just add all of the layers as new art mesh. This one's nice, especially if you just exported the PSD of just the toggle layers. Obviously I didn't, so I'm gonna hit cancel. I reopened the PSD and I'm gonna show you guys what I usually do just because I find it easier for me So I'm just gonna create a new file with the PSD file and then have it at full scale And then it's going to open up that new tab with my new PSD Now if you ever mess up one of your keyframes on a layer and you screwed it up so bad You can't revert it. You can always open up your PSD as a different model like this and do what I'm doing right now Which I am opening up my folders. I'm taking my alt outfit folder and I'm just gonna hit Control X to basically cut this entire folder out of here. And then I'm gonna go back to my original rigged model and I'm gonna hit Control V to paste all of those layers in. And then you'll have all the layers you actually want into your rigged model. Most of the time, your outfit will align perfectly with your model if you use the same PSD and didn't change the size or anything. I had to change the size of my PSD because my new accessories are a little taller than my canvas. So I just gotta hit Shift and click and drag this until everything matches up. So let me just figure that out. Okay, and then when you paste other parts from a different model, it will put everything under this little deformer here where you can move everything. I don't need that right now, so I'm gonna delete that. And now we have our new layers on our model that we can finally rig in and get this toggle started. I'm gonna close the other model here that I don't need anymore. And I'm not gonna save it because I don't need it saved. So now that we have our layers in, let's get it organized and fix up the layer order so everything is overlapping correctly. So I'm gonna take all of the new layers on the side here and I'll put them into their own Warp Deformer folder. Let's call this All It's Outfit just to keep them organized for now. And then I'm actually gonna go over here on the parts section and we're gonna hide all the outfit stuff. Because before I wanna overlay all of these correctly, I wanna make everything that's not not on the new alt outfit disappear. So on my parameter tab here, I have a toggles folder. Now when I open this, I already have a couple toggles here that I made on stream um, a while ago that I never use. <laughs> so let me make this a little bigger for you guys. I'm gonna make a new parameter under my outfits toggles parameter. And it's gonna be called default off. And we're gonna make this parameter to basically when it's on, all of our default outfit will be off. So we're gonna make it range from zero, zero, one, and we're gonna make this a blend shape. And we're gonna hit okay. If we are on 5.0, all the new blend shape updates make blend shapes like really nice. So I will be using blend shapes a ton more in my tutorials. So don't be scared of blend shapes. I made these toggles before the blend shapes updates, so they aren't blend shapes. But you can tell blend shape is a blend shape if it has that square around the circle instead of just the basic circle here. So let's start taking off our clothes, guys. I already have a toggle to take my apron off, so I'm gonna turn that on. However, whenever we wanna like reset our model to the default values, it's gonna turn that back to zero because that's what the default is. So for now, let's turn our apron on slash off, change its default to one, so it'll by default be off. Now that we have that big apron out of the way, let's take our shirt. 
All right, I'm gonna click on my sleeve, define my sleeve, give it a parameter here, and on one, we're gonna change the opacity to zero. The sleeve disappears. A faster way is just to select what you can, hold down shift, and try to select everything that you can kind of touch. You can put a keyframe on all of those at the same time and change the opacity to zero there. So let me just do that for everything on my default outfit. All right, we are done. If you're a genius like me and you knew you're gonna make outfits in the future, you will hopefully have a nice naked body as a base. If not, um, I hope your new layers make sense to you. So if we use the blend shape, everything will turn on and off. And since it's a blend shape, it won't affect any of your other rigged parameters if you rigged it directly on the layer. You can also put the blend shape, you can also put this default off parameter on your warp deformers, if you have like your entire outfit under one warp deformer, you can put that there easily. Personally for me, I like doing it directly on the layer. And if it's a model, I know that I'll be making a ton of different outfits and toggles for I will separate this default off like I did for my apron off. Usually I would do like default hair off or default top off or just small sections of the model to turn off. So if I don't need it for a different toggle, it'll be available just for that small part. I don't know if that makes any sense. If you do a lot of rigging, you know what I mean. But one thing is you don't have to make your toggle all on one parameter. When we set this up in VTube Studio, you can turn off and on multiple parameters. So do not worry about having too many parameters. But let's do the same thing we did for default off that we did for apron on. And let's edit the default to be one for now. So whenever we reset it to default values, our model will have all the default outfit stuff off. And now that that's off, let's go and unhide our alt outfit. There we go. Now for this part, I'm basically just gonna take all of the layers I made and put them into the right layer order over on my parts tab. For example, my new back hair here, I'm gonna be putting this behind my head and just sticking everything where they should be in layer order. Do not look at my part tab and try to copy me because my layers are a really, really big fat mess over here. So I hope you're more organized than me. But now that we have that layer order all figured out, uh, don't forget to save. Control S for those that don't know. Also pro tip, since a lot of people always have this issue that I tend to help out with, if you ever forget to save and like your PC dies, your live 2D crashes, something goes wrong, just go over to the help tab over here. And at the bottom here, you can open up the auto backup folder. If you click on that, live 2D will periodically do an auto save on the current project you're working on. So you can open up that and find like at least something in like the past 20 minutes or something that you can go back and work on. It's way better than starting from scratch if you haven't saved forever since beginning your model or anything. The auto backup folder is your best friend, okay? Trust me, when I found this out, <laughs> it was a lifesaver. But anyway, just, just don't forget to say, okay guys? Now that we have everything in correct layer order, let's make a new parameter here and let's call this alt outfit on. We get 001 and this will also be a blend shape. We're going to select everything from the new outfit toggle that should hopefully not be organized in the warps yet. So it's easy just to click and select everything, give it keyforms, and at zero, we're going to put the opacity to zero. Obviously, our default right now is zero. So for now, while we're rigging it, let's turn the default to one. And if you hit the three bars here and hit reset the default values, it should all be good again. Also another thing that a lot of people have issues with whenever you're on these three bars, you're setting things the default form. Sometimes people accidentally hit lock default form and this will cause you not to be able to rig anything. So if you're ever having issues like that, check if this is checked or not. So now that we have all of these toggles on and working and everything and set to their temporary defaults just for rigging, let's organize the warps into where they should be. Now I'll show you two different ways. I, I, 
I guess there are different ways. It depends on which piece you're making. For example, right here I have this little tuft of hair. And it's not anything too different. It's just another little piece of hair. It's not like a whole new accessory like my bow here. So I can basically put this on one of my warp deformers for my front hair already. And it should rig itself fine since the, you know, it, it's not too different. And of course, if you're a regular on this channel, you know that we try to do the lazy way to do things. I mean, I mean, it's efficient, efficient ways to do things. So I'm going to find that tuft of hair it's on. Make sure it's the right one. And then on the side where the deforms are, it'll open up where it is. So I can see that. And I can pick up my new tuft of hair. Make sure you give it some mesh. And then I'm going to click and drag it into the same warp here. Now if I go into my physics settings and move it around, it should be moving with that hair. Easy peasy. It's a little different because the shape is a little awkward and the hair is overlapping a little weird. But nothing a little editing can't do. It's a lot better than ringing it from scratch. Now for another example of that, let me take my hair bow here. I want to keep this bow all together. So I'm going to make a new warp deformer with those three layers. And I'm going to call this Alt Head Bow. Make sure to give those some mesh. And unlike my hair, I don't have anything directly to put it on. But, you know, I want to move with my head. So I'm going to put it with all of my head deformers. So it'll move with my head. I can find my head deformer here. And I can stick this entire bow under that warp deformer. If I open up my deformer's underhead, I have angle Z and angle XY. Sometimes I'll just put it under like angle XY that's under my head deformer. And then just go to physics settings to see how that'll look. And honestly, it doesn't look too bad. It needs some work for the up and down angles, but nothing a little warp deformer and some editing can't do. At least for me, it's a good base. Same thing for my new little swoopies here. I'm going to take my new buns, put them in their own warp deformer. I'm going to right click on them where my default pigtails would be just so I can find them. And I'm not going to put them in this folder because obviously these guys are different shapes and sizes and they won't look the same. The former doesn't even cover the entire thing. But they're still pigtails and these pigtails are for my back hair. So I'm going to stick this into my angle XY deformer on my back hair. So now that my new alt buttons are under this back hair deformer, let's quickly give these some mesh. Pop them into the physics settings and they move. They don't move too great, but they move with the head and, you know, it's a good place to start. It's better than scratch. Like I said before. So I'm just going to put everything that can go into existing warps into those warps right now. Obviously, some of these can't go into their own warps. For example, this bag I will have to make new warps for because I didn't have a bag on my original one. So let me just quickly stick everything into places that they should be in. All right, so I put everything in places where I, I could. At least everything sort of moves with the model. I don't have to do too much um, rigging, sort of. But now that that's done, basically, we're just going to rig everything. If you're rigging an outfit onto your model, I'm assuming you already know how to rig. So just using whatever you've got right now, you just got to rig these new parts to your existing model. To make sure everything's moving right and add your physics and everything. So I'm basically just going to be doing that for the rest of this part, basically, until we get to the end for VTube Studio. So feel free to watch or you can skip it while you're rigging your own thing. But let me get in here and make everything work.
all right and i am all done as you can see um you might notice that I don't have my bag here. I was trying to rig it in, but the way I did my body angles and then the whole coat and everything with the way I separated the bag, it just, um, it wasn't working, okay? So we'll just use that bag for, for pictures and not the, the model. Um, but anyway, hopefully you guys are done. Oh, well, I'm assuming you're done if you're this far. But yeah, I just added all the physics. I did the angles. Um, it's not the best. Don't look too closely. As always, I'm just trying to give you guys, you know, the basics, and then you guys rig better than me, okay? That's the deal. You're supposed to be better than the teacher. But yeah, if it looks like it works, then hopefully it does work. I would make sure to check your default outfit again to see if it works, just in case you accidentally broke something while you're rigging. Sometimes uh, that tends to happen. Sometimes. Let's make sure everything's still working fine. Don't worry, because when you put in the VTube Studio, you'll probably find something wrong anyway, and then you can go back and fix it. Now that you have your model all rigged in with a cute outfit and everything, we can go ahead and fix the toggles. Um, earlier, I told you guys to make the alt outfit on toggle. Um, hopefully you guys read my note, because I would say... Do that now. Pick out all of your little new outfit layers or warps or whatever to add the toggle and make sure that the default is where everything is toggled off and make the on when everything is toggled on or vice versa. We can always change it sort of. But now that that's rigged in, we can edit these parameters again and change the defaults to zero. So here's my alt outfit on zero and then you change my default off to zero. So now when we hit reset the default values, we should get our normal default outfit. I need to fix my apron too. Now that you have that done, let us put all the layers into our texture atlas. All the new ones anyway. Again, I'm assuming you know how the texture atlas works and everything since you've already had a rigged model. So I am just gonna make my texture atlas real quick. Voila! Make sure nothing's overlapping, everything is fine. One of the issues with making new all outfits onto existing models is that it'll take up more texture atlas space and you might need to make your texture atlas bigger. But the bigger you make your texture atlas, the heavier your model's gonna be. So sometimes it's just better to make a whole new model for a different outfit. For example, I would take everything we just did on this model, delete all the default outfit, and just have the alt outfit as the default outfit. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm pretty sure you guys are smart enough to figure that out, hopefully. But now that Texture Atlas is done, let's hit OK. Texture Atlas done, let's export it. Export for runtime, export as MOC3 file. Make sure your export version is 5.0 if you are using any 5.0 features like the new blend shape abilities like I did in this tutorial you just watched. Hit OK. Now, usually I just save this over my existing model that I use for stream and everything. I just stick it right in the model and replace all the files. You can make a whole new folder to put this one in just in case you just want to test it out and you don't want to overwrite anything. You can do that too. And I'm just going to hit save. Overwrite everything. Now that everything's exported, let's go into VTube Studio. Alright, here we are in VTube Studio. I open up my model. As you can see, I'm moving around. She's working um, as, as best as she can. So let's set up our toggle. Just double click on the screen, open up the menus, click on settings. We're going to be on the last tab here with that little clapper. And we will be in the hotkey settings with the expression editor here. The expression editor is where we're going to make our toggle. So click on expression editor. We're going to make a new expression. And now we're going to see all our parameters here. First, let's name our expression. This is going to be alt outfit for me at least. And then I'm going to scroll down to my toggles area with all of my default off and all outfit on stuff so i'm gonna turn default off on and alt outfit on so first of all you know i want to take off my default outfit so let's turn that off i forgot my apron so let's turn my apron off now i'm naked let's turn our alt outfit on there we go now you just have to hit save and now you'll have a new toggle here again remember to name your toggle if you did it because it won't let you make it if you won't name it so let's close out of that and now to actually use that toggle, let's press this plus button here to make a hotkey. Let's name our hotkey to make sure everything's nice and organized. I'm gonna call this alt outfit. And then you can hit this 
button here to minimize it and open it up so you can keep all your toggles organized. Obviously, trash can means to delete this hotkey. And then you can make folders if you have like multiple outfits or multiple expressions, etc, etc. We're not doing that today. And this is the global key button. So it basically makes it so that you can toggle this off or on with your keyboard or not. Personally, I turn this off when I'm streaming just in case I hit a key and then um, it does something I don't want. Uh, typically, I will hit 7 on my numpad and that toggles my drawing arm. So when I'm rigging on stream and I hit 7, um, my, my hand will go up and down. So usually, you know, you, want, you might want to turn that off. Anyway, let's make our hotkey action here. Hotkey action, if you click on that, this will tell you what this hotkey does. So there's a lot of things you can do in VTube Studio because VTube Studio is pretty awesome. You can do a lot of things. We are just going to use the set slash unset expression. So let's click on that one. And then the expression we want to set slash unset will be our alt outfit. So let's select that one. Now, these are everything you can use to toggle this toggle on or off. For key combination, if you hit record and then press a button on your keyboard or anything, that will record that button. So whenever you hit that button, it will trigger the toggle. For example, I'll hit record. I'm gonna hit zero on my numpad. And then when I hit zero on my numpad, after confirming that, it should toggle my outfit. Now, so let me scoot over here. So that works. You can also use the gesture trigger. As of this moment, gesture trigger is only for webcam users, I believe, because uh, this actually records your hand movement. And I'm pretty sure uh, hand tracking is only limited in webcam right now. This one's pretty nice for like hand toggles, like a peace sign toggle. If you throw up a peace sign IRL, then your model can throw up a peace sign. It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Hockey settings here. You can change how fast the fade is for your toggles. For example, when I do the toggle, it's like it's a little slow. For for example, if we change fade for seconds to two seconds, it will make the transition a lot longer. But if we change it to like zero, it'll make the transition very fast. Boop, 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 boop. So uh, try to pick one that you like the most. If you turn on stop after seconds, it will revert the toggle back after a certain amount of time. So if I turn this to one second and I turn the toggle on, it should stay on for that one second. I don't know if you could tell, but <laughs> it stayed for a second. You can also do stop when key is let go. So if I turn this on and I hold down zero, it'll stay on while my finger is on zero. And then I release my finger and it's gone. Screen button hotkeys are useful if you have a certain setup. You just click on one of these numbers and it will light up and that means it's on your screen to use. But you will need to go up here and make sure use screen button hotkeys is on. Then after you close settings, you should be able to see a very faint circle here. It should be light and it will toggle on your toggle. Now of course, make sure your toggle actually works. Make sure your outfit is, um, you know, it looks fine. You're working, it's working, it's moving. In, nothing's out of place or clipping wrong. If not, you can always just go back into your file in Live 2D and fix it up. But yeah, look at my new outfit. I'll um, I'll figure that bag out one day. <laughs> I really think the bag puts the outfit all together, so I'm kind of sad that uh, I couldn't rig it properly, but you know, maybe I'll just put it in there, but it's rigged wrong, so um, I, I don't know. Anyway, that's basically the end of the tutorial. I've got nothing else to say other than after you make your toggle, you will have new files in your model file folder in VTube Studio, so don't be alarmed. But I hope that helped you guys out. A lot of people were asking me about this tutorial, so I, I hope it made sense. If not, you can always ask questions in the comments and me or someone else will try to help you out. You can also join our Discord to ask some questions if you'd like. Um, I'm, I will say I'm a tiny bit more active on Discord than I am on uh, YouTube. What else? Oh, happy new year's guys. First video of the year. My, my new year's resolution is to be more consistent with the videos. However, after I said that, I realized I have a lot of trips this year. So I'm not sure how I'm going to make videos while I'm out on trips. But maybe it can be next year's resolution too. <laughs> But thank you guys for all the support. Thank you guys for, for watching the videos and everything. Um, This month on my Discord, well, we do monthly events, but this month, if you draw your rat Sona, I will put it on my stream overlay. How often am I streaming this month? This year? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. But I think it would still be fun to have everyone's rats on my overlay. So come join us. 
My VTuber group, Fruko, also recently uh, dropped our merch shop a few days ago. So if you guys are interested in any merch, feel free to check it out. We are very low on everything. <laughs> so hopefully there's, there's still something. But I have faith that there will still be stuff, so don't worry. And then I will be working on my new model. I will be making that new video series for you guys. You know, I'm, I'm not really good at rigging, but apparently I'm good at teaching, so you're welcome. <laughs> I'm hoping to make the new model a lot more complex and um, pretty, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, I've kept you guys here long enough. Thank you guys for watching the video. I'll see you guys later next week. Next week, hopefully, or on the Discord or, or on Twitter or wherever else you're going to find me. And next stream, I'm definitely wearing this outfit, okay? After I fix up the rig. Don't look too closely. I know you can see a lot of mistakes right now, but just don't look, just don't look too closely, okay, guys? Okay, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye!